Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at basically uh, the obfuscating strings in this banker sample. Now I say banker, I've done a blog post on this, but I want to explain it as well. There's a few things that I want to talk about while while on a video, so I decided to make a video on it as well. Um, first of all, I you know don't want to define it as a banker, as in I've ex analyzed all of this and I know what it is. I haven't. Um, the main thing here is that I've searched on hybrid analysis for um banker and this is this is what i've got okay so that's the main thing from this this is also on a remote um connection this is on a virtual server so um if the resolution looks weird or we're looking a bit different then that's that's because it's on on something it's not mine um it's somewhere else in i don't even know where um so we've got this sample and of course we've got a pdf icon on it because that's how the 2016 went really it just it went like that, and 2017 hasn't been much better. Uh, that's what the sample looks like, and I've I've reached to this subroutine, and basically I didn't really uh, reach to this subroutine. What I did is I actually done what I usually do, which is check the strings, and I found NTDLL on this um, the, a string on that. So I think that's right at the end. As we can see here, this subroutine is ridiculously long. Now I I comment on my blog post. On really, this could have been done in a for loop. This, this definitely could have. Really, the main body of this is understanding um, some of the inputs that we get. So there's some static strings, and the first thing you would think from this, if we go to the actual sample strings, we're on that module, yeah. The first thing is, is that people would look at that and think, possibly packed, possibly, you know, weird, sort of not much else strings wise. But there is that reoccurring uh, string here, which is eventually the key pool. But we first look at this maybe in static analysis, you would think possibly packed. Maybe not. You might think, oh, actually, it's obfuscated strings. But, you know, the, one of the other things you would possibly think is that it's packed. Um, but if you've done some disassembly, you would notice there is something a bit strange about it. There's a call every time to the, the string, and it, it looks to be small amounts of strings that aren't manipulating in different ways. So what we get as well is we get four arguments essentially gets put into this this function. Um, I've called it deobfuscate because I'm inventive. Um, so we've got this which is or you always assume a number 22 on this case um, and then we've also got what looks to be a number which is I'm not highlighting the correct one genius 11 um, and you might already ingeniously notice that 11 looks to be the length of that and looks to be that looks to be the length of that and you are correct in some manner so if we go on to the deobfuscate function um obviously we've got standards we don't need to know worry about that but we get this now i've already called it loop counter because i know what's going on now uh, but it is quite obvious if we go down um so if we have yeah if we just highlight loop, loop counter if we go down to the bottom here we've got an increment although this is positioned right at the end and we get the return over here which is kind of a bit it's not weird weird, but it just, uh, other for loops I've seen, it doesn't look, but anyway, um, so this is the increment right here, we've got move it into EX, add it, and then just move it back, so there's nothing major, like, really confusing about this function really, we can see already that it is a for loop from the loop counter there, and also the comparison we get from moving it into ECX, comparing it to this number, which is the length of the string input. Uh, so the max iteration is what that is being put to um, and then we made a decision if it is then we can return and we don't need to worry about it we just clean up um, and otherwise we do this operation and this is the main body and we already if you don't know reversing you're getting into reversing then this is certainly a good video i guess for you if you're quite seasoned in reverse engineering you're going to be like jack you're fucking boring and i'll be like okay okay sorry i'm sorry um but anyway um, so we're moving that into the loop counter again into e EX and we're actually doing some modulation here um, because obviously the actual key pool that we have is considerably smaller than some of the strings that we have. I don't know why I'm, I could have just backed into this one. The, the, the size is obviously considerably smaller than this string input although we'll move on to some interesting points to that as well in a bit. So we need some modulation and actually we can see that we've got a byte pointer here. So we're getting actually uh, a character from there. Uh, we're, getting a, we're going to get a single character 
Um, and then we're going to do the main part of this, which is doing an exclusive or bitwise operation with EAX and ECX. Now, you know, there's, there's certain interesting parts to this, which is that the string itself, the string input is essentially, um, there's parts that are malformed or, or incorrect intentionally so that it, it comes out as a different operation. So I think the best way to explain it is to say what I've done. So I've created a Python script, which I could potentially pour into IDA to create an IDA script. Although, to be honest, it was only sort of a, a exercise for me, um, a short exercise that I didn't really, I was just getting on with IDA scripts and understand it. But anyway, um, reproducing the function of a program is sometimes important, especially in malware analysis. And so here we've got this function that does certain things, most notably an exclusive or towards characters, um, and then puts them into the stack and then returns the result later on. Um, that's fantastic, but we want to also check that this also works. So we, well, I personally, I use um, Oli Debug, Immunity Debugger sometimes. I know that there's a few Win Debug fans that, or Win Debug, I know some people. <laughs> Windy bag. I know that there are some people that prefer to use this. If I actually reload this, you'll notice that it goes, holy no, holy no, we don't want to load this. That is fine because we have actually got a fairly portable function where we are inputting a few arguments and we've got no outside interference whatsoever. So we've just got these arguments here and then we are just simply using all of these. There's nothing major out of these. Um, so we can just simply go and set a new origin. So our new origin is going to be here. There we go. Perfectly fine. And what we need to do now is we're going to step into this. So we've got our argument. We're pushing that. There we go. We're pushing. Oh, still got my face in the way. There we go. So we're pushing that. And we're going to push the rest of the arguments until we get into the call. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually just going to breakpoint exclusive or operation because I'm a bit lazy. Um, I could just FT this. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to play that. And we'll see the... Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to step, first of all, into just the start, first of all. Um, so if we just normal stuff, the decision, comparing the loot counter, which is still at zero, I believe. We've just started, so it should be. Um, and then the decision whether to return or not, we obviously need to not return. Um, and then we start seeing um, the characters being introduced here. So we've got our key pool here. It will be 1. So it will be 31 in hex. Yeah, you see the ECX register there. And then we'll introduce the input string here. And then we will then do the hexadecimal representation of R, which is 72. And then we will finally exclusive. I've, you know what? I've breakpointed the EDX fucking clear. Oh, there we go. Um, and then we XOR and get that value that we want, which is into EAX to the return value. Um, 43, which is our value. And then what it will do is we will see a change. If I get my face out of the way, there we go. And we will see a change very soon. There we go. C. So we can see that that's the first one, C. I'm actually going to move my face in the middle here so that we can have a better view of this. Um, there we go. That is better. That is better. Okay, that, and then, you know what? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to play this. So let's just move that on. We are obviously always one step behind because we haven't moved the character behind there. But... Um, I'm just going to break point and return as well because that's common good practice. Um, and then I'm just going to keep going. Close handle. Right, so we're at Z, uh, E. And as you can see there, that just completely cleared. That very last part there, we saw that just went from a load of other input string that we just had to close handle in a short amount of time there. And that's a little bit confusing. Um, so why is that, would you think? 
Um, well, essentially, the rest of the hexadecimal, um, or rather, the rest of the ASCII strings that we get there, um, and the exclusive OR operations, are complete junk, and uh, is intentionally doing an exception. So when I put this into a Python representation, the best way is, um, for me, was to just return once we get an exception, and then you will get every single one of the uh, correct strings that we want. Um, so what I did is I copied these into a string file. This is straight from Ollie Debug. I removed a few strings that really weren't relevant, but really I left it alone for a little bit because I was a little bit lazy, and you can handle it easier into um, in, in Python. So what I did is I simply um, used the key pool. The interesting thing is that because of modulation, we also have to include a zero, but we don't get that in the string. That's the most interesting part as well. Uh, do remember that. Um, so if it isn't zero, then we can just do normal um, by XORing the value of these. These are actually not numerical values. They're actually the hexadecimal the representation of them ASCII strings. So these aren't actually numbers. And then we hit a number which is straight out zero, which is why it's different and it's I, I'm casting it as zero. Um, and then basically I'm just making it a little bit cleaner so that we don't have to... Um, the, this is to remove it so we can decode the, the hex and then we return it when there's an exception. Or if it's a very short string, you will simply get the hex string, which is why you should also return hit the mic um, and then I've just filtered the lines basically opened it up done a function where we're doing a for loop on every single line if it is uh, just clean it up so that we only get the the string input that we want if it's not the key pool then let's try and deobfuscate it and the result is quite good we get that is cr oh. you know what it would it would have been great if I remembered that it was sample XOR not XOR sample there we go. And of course, we've got our deobfuscated strings in the correct way. If I remove the error handling, I will get exceptions because parts of these are not what we want to see. Um, they will go wrong. So that is something that I think I should wanted to show, basically. Short little um, introduction into what I've been, you know, what, something that I did for uh, like an evening. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. A little bit insightful. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but... Hopefully it was it was fairly interesting for you guys. Um, if you did, if you liked it, give it a like. Comment down below. Um, there are loads of things that I could do, like the the rest of the BEPS exploit exploit kit samples and stuff like that. But at the moment, I don't know. It, it's just a lot of people are on and off with it. So I'm I'm deciding what sort of content I should provide. And I thought this was an interesting one that I I should I should provide really. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.